Hey guys, today we're going to be talking about the African diaspora in Ireland. Freedom For those who don't know, since 1922, Ireland has been split into two separate nations, Northern Ireland and the Republic of Ireland. This separation came on political and religious grounds following the Anglo-Irish Treaty of 1921, which declared the whole of Ireland a free state. While there is much historical crossover pre-1922, for the purposes of this video, we'll be focusing on the African diaspora in the Republic of Ireland. So let's get started. According to the 2016 census, the Afro-Irish population is almost 65,000 people. Records show that there's been a small black presence in Ireland since the 1700s, mainly in major cities and towns such as Limerick, Cork and Dublin. According to the Irish academic William Hart, by the late 18th century there was over a thousand black people in Ireland, and by the mid-19th century there were between three and ten thousand. One of the earliest accounts of a black presence on mainland Ireland was that of Tony Small, a freed enslaved African who had saved the Irish aristocrat Lord Edward Fitzgerald during the Battle of Utah Springs in the American Revolutionary War. After the battle, Tony accompanied Lord Fitzgerald to Ireland and in 1786 his portrait was painted by the artist John Roberts. Some of the 18th century black population were enslaved Others worked as tradesmen, soldiers, artists and musicians. Mulatto Jack was a free black Irishman who was kidnapped and sold into slavery in Antigua. In 1736 he was charged with conspiring to stage a slave rebellion. However, it was deemed that Mulatto Jack had suffered enough hardship after 16 years of slavery and he was sent back to Ireland. Rachel Baptiste was a black Irish singer and musician known as the Black Siren. From 1750 to 1775, she performed throughout Ireland and organised numerous concerts with her husband, a fellow musician known only as Mr Crow. Over her 25-year career, Rachel performed across Ireland, including for the Irish dramatist John O'Keefe, who described her as being received with great delight by the audience. Osman Tisani was a South African expat living in Ireland. He was notable for speaking fluent Irish and being the first known person of African origin to speak the Galway Celtic dialect of Irish. He was listed in the 1911 census as living in Galway. Until relatively recently, Ireland's involvement in the transatlantic slave trade was not widely discussed in the mainstream. It's thanks to historians like Nene Rogers and William Hart who have researched and documented Ireland's slaving past and the history of the African diaspora in Ireland that this information has become widely accessible. It was the British royal dynasty of the Stuarts who introduced Ireland to the slave trade. After a year in exile in Europe, the Stuart King, Charles II, returned to England in 1660 and founded the Royal Africa Company, which shipped more enslaved Africans to the Americas than any other institution during the transatlantic slave trade. Irish names can be found on the list of RAC workers, including William Ronan, who became the chairman of the Committee of Merchants at Cape Castle in modern-day Ghana. By the end of the 17th century, the RAC no longer enjoyed the monopoly it had once had on the British slave trade, and individual merchants began to trade and profit. Although Irish ports were banned from launching direct voyages to Africa, a number of Irish merchants and their descendants successfully settled and traded from the cities of Bristol and Liverpool in England, which were formerly major slave trading ports. Several Irish individuals and families participated in the trafficking of enslaved Africans, such as the Frake family in Bristol who originated from Cork, or the slave merchant David Tui who had migrated from Tralee to Liverpool. Meanwhile in the Caribbean, a wave of second generation Irish settlers were making huge profit off the transatlantic slave trade. From the 17th century onwards they began populating the Leeward Islands, including St Kitts, Montserrat and Antigua. The Irish ports of Cork, Limerick and Belfast exported salted and pickled food products to the West Indies to feed enslaved Africans and plantation owners. In return, sugar and tobacco cultivated on plantations in the Caribbean were exported to Ireland. In 1779, Dublin Parliament campaigned for plantation goods to be shipped directly to Ireland rather than via British ports. This can be seen in the 1780 print of Hibernia, the Latin name for Ireland, here personified as a woman, holding a banner bearing the words free trade. At her feet kneel three figures offering gifts, 
including an enslaved African. When Britain abolished slavery in 1833, the government paid £20 million to compensate slave owners for their loss. It was Scots-Irish slave owner James Blair who received more money than any other slave owners in the British Empire. As much as Ireland was part of the transatlantic slave trade, the country was also visited by a number of well-known former enslaved people turned abolitionists, including Olauda Equiano, Charles Lennox Raymond and Frederick Douglass. In 1845, Frederick Douglass spent four months in Ireland, which he described as transformative. He even referred to himself as the Black O'Connell, a reference to the revered Irish Catholic emancipator Daniel O'Connell, whom he met during his time there. Former US President Barack Obama commented on this historic meeting when he visited Ireland in 2011. The African diaspora in Ireland today is mainly due to more recent waves of immigration in the 20th and 21st century. The majority are from or descended from other Anglophone Commonwealth countries in Africa and the Caribbean and migrate for work or study purposes. Some also come as asylum seekers. And interestingly, there is a growing number of African clergy who migrate to Ireland to compensate for the reduced number of Irish clergy. Historically in Ireland, countless mixed-race and Afro-descendant children have suffered abuse in institutions run by the Catholic Church. The majority of documented cases were of children born to white Irish mothers and African and Caribbean fathers in the 50s and 60s, who were subsequently put into care where they received abhorrent abuse and racist treatment. This included verbal, physical and sexual abuse, including whippings, beatings and even being deprived of food or the right to bathe. Many mixed-race children were also denied from being put up for adoption as it was believed that white Irish families would not want to give them a home. One victim of such treatment, Rosemary Adassa, went on to form the Mixed Race Irish Association, which today has hundreds of members. The group have spoken openly of the endemic racism they faced, both within the care system and in wider Irish society. They also petitioned to be included in the Mother and Baby Homes Commission of Investigation to formally acknowledge and catalogue their experiences of racist abuse. In 2019, the question of defining blackness in Ireland was brought to the fore when Anthony Ekundayo Lennon, a mixed-race man born to seemingly white Irish parents, gained widespread media coverage. It began in 2018 when the British newspaper The Sunday Times published an article exposing Anthony as a white actor who had erroneously been awarded the Artistic Director Leadership Programme grant for BAME theatre practitioners. Although Anthony's parents looked white, he himself appeared to have African heritage and had always identified as a mixed race man. For several months, he was discredited as a fraud until DNA results proved that Anthony in fact had 32% West African genetic makeup, confirming that his seemingly white Irish parents both had recessive African genes. Since 2014, Ireland has officially celebrated a National Black History Month. Annual celebrations usually include events across the country, including music concerts and discussion panels. Famous black Irish people include actress Leila Flaherty, TV presenter Kamal Ibrahim, singer Laura Izibor, rugby player Autan Dillan, singer Samantha Mumba, football player David McGoldrick, political activist Kevin Sharkey and rapper Reggie Snow. In 2007, Nigerian-born politician Rotimi Adebari became the first black mayor in Ireland when he was elected mayor of Port Leash. Irish radio presenter Ola Majeko Dunmi, who was a passionate Irish language activist, hosts a radio show called Afra Air on Radio Na Life. Irish historian and broadcaster Emma Debiri is the author of the highly acclaimed book Don't Touch My Hair. Actress Ruth Nager starred in the highly acclaimed 2016 film Loving with Joel Edgerton. Phil Lynott was the frontman of the rock band Thin Lizzy, famous for their 1976 hit The Boys Are Back In Town. That brings us to the end of our video on black history in Ireland. If you enjoyed that, then please do check out the other videos on the channel. And for daily black history content, find me on Instagram at Freedom Is Mine Official. I'll see you in the next video. Freedom is mine.